Dylan Moran is one of Ireland's funniest exports, but he sees himself a little differently. I, mean, I basically think, I, you know, I'm what would have happened if James Dean had lived and discovered carbohydrates in orthopaedic shoes. While hiding in bookshops doesn't usually make you famous, it's worked for him several times. So I saw you put that book down your trousers. What book? The one down your trousers. What? Uh, I'd like to buy a book. Here's one. <laughs> no, I was This one's very, very good. So, like his character in the BAFTA award-winning Black Books, Dylan Moran is a lovable curmudgeon. What are they really? Children. Midget drunks. That's what they are. Please welcome Dylan Moran! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so, what's what's going through your mind at this point in an interview, when it starts? Well, right now, after seeing that, it's very odd. I'm, you know, I'm 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 in my forties now. So, look, I haven't I never see that stuff. So, so uh, I want to talk about my new range of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it is it for the for the gentleman of a certain age, who is willing to show himself to the world? Is that is that? No, no, it's not not for. Uh, Humans, it's, uh, <laughs> it's for the larger game uh, out there who but, are, are frankly sick <laughs> of being objectified. So it's conservative underwear. Conservative underwear for Rhino. Right. I'm tired, <laughs> tired of people coming and just gulping. <laughs> for the bashful Rhino. Yeah. Yeah, delightful. And and how long have you been working on this? Well, it's it's new. The market is limited. But I... <laughs> and, and dwindling over time. Yeah, unfortunately it is. That's thanks for introducing the tragic element to my own. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you've been doing stand-up since, since you were 19. A long time. A long time. Years. Was there ever a plan? No. No. It's comedy isn't something you plan. The comedy is something that... You go to a party and you end up in a bath with four other people and you wake up and one of you has a chicken. You don't know how it happened. <laughs> And that's how you see your career up until this point. Yeah, I never had any plan. I really didn't. didn't. I didn't know what was happening. I, 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 I don't think you can plan this stuff, really. But you, you clearly knew that this is what you were meant to do. I, of all of the things on offer to you. I love the way you put that, all of the things on offer. You had, I, I, I assume you had all I, the options. I did. I worked my way through it. The, the librarian and the <laughs> law library and the <laughs> nuclear accountant and all the rest of it. <laughs> no, I didn't really feel a huge uh, number of options were available in recession-plagued uh, Ireland of the, of the 80s. Um, so, no, it was just something, of, you know, I went to a club in Dublin, I saw these people, they were actually really great, I thought it would be some sort of student review, and uh, they were really talented, and I asked could I get on the next week, and that was it. And back then, this was before you face and uh, <laughs> Institute and all those things. <laughs> and, and there was you went, there was nothing else like that in town. So you could go every week. And people came back even though they knew you were going and they were going to see you again. <laughs> they would still come. So was it, are you saying that good comedy is just a product of, of consistent boredom? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, it does help. It does. It really does. I think it helps for anything. I think it helps for comedy or music or any kind of writing at all, yeah. Do you feel like today everyone is occupying themselves on Institute, as you, as you yeah. say? Do, do, have we lost the art of boredom? I think we have, and I think it's really useful. I think it's really useful to, because, you, you know, to be properly... To want to do something, to want to make something, you have to really be cosmically bored. Because <laughs> if, if you just sort of, you know, in between YouTube videos or, you know, the latest uh, ra uh, hip-hop video or whatever it is, you know, you're not really going to... You might think, oh, I've got an idea for, a, you know, an operetta in space, but you probably won't bother to jot down the essentials. Whereas if, <laughs> if, if, there's, if, there's, if there's literally months going between, you know, somebody <clears throat> offering you a bag of crisps and your auntie farting, you will. <laughs> I'm just wondering what the fundamentals are of an operetta in space. Um, I'd imagine something, you know, brief scene in the engine room and then um, <laughs> something would explode and then you'd probably find something that wasn't supposed to be there. Maybe in your underwear. Who knows? <laughs> um, so, it has to be said, uh, Ireland has changed a lot in what feels like a very short space of, of time. Do you even recognise... Ireland society anymore? I, I do recognise it because it looks like a lot of other European cities. Uh, <laughs> but prior to that, it was just uh, the same people who looked like me um, 
everybody, the women, even, <laughs> even more so than, than me. And um, uh, for, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, you had a lot of Catholic white people uh, who knew each other um, complaining and, uh, 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 about, about the English. And then, um, and then it became a world city. Dublin became a world city. It looks like lots of other places now. People came from all over the world. And Irish people found out how, uh, you know, if they worked together and really believed as a society, they discovered just how racist they could be. <laughs> and then, uh, they, hadn't, they hadn't known that before because they'd taken for granted their right to go everywhere and set up shop wherever they wanted. Um, but then, you know, people have adjusted and now actually, you know, people do rub along together and people are from everywhere and they get along fine in Dublin. So, so we've just had marriage equality succeed in a referendum in, in Ireland. Oh, sorry, what's that? Are you referring to the, the gay marriage law that has passed in <coughs> Ireland before it's managed to pass in Australia? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't know why you're making such a big thing about that. It's not like it's an incredibly backward, retrogressive <laughs> position <laughs> to be in. Well, uh, I, uh, I, and I'm not lying, uh, we were genuinely excited that it happened well, no in wonder. Ireland. No wonder you were genuinely excited that it happened in Ireland since you don't have it here. You must be very, very envious <laughs> of the incredible <laughs> forward-thinking uh, uh, progressive attitudes that exist in Ireland, the famous country of fascistic Catholics <laughs> <laughs> who have now got gay marriage and you don't. What yeah. you <laughs> so, so, all right, so what was it that meant the fascistic Catholics no longer had control over people's minds? Uh, I think people just got tired of the ch of the hold the church had on them um, on on everybody and everything, especially through education. You know, people people moved on because every, every it used to be everyone went to to church all, yeah, the, all the time. They were I, really into it. When I was the year I was born, roughly ninety five percent of the population went to mass every Sunday, and now it's something like ten percent. That's a huge turnover. It, it is. That's not a joke. That that happened in my lifetime. I, my family didn't go, but everybody else. On our, <laughs> on our street did. That's, that's true. And, um, and now people have just left it because it didn't do them any favours. Now, just one more thing I wanted to ask you was quite often when you perform, you share the stage with your artwork behind you. And I find it interesting that as a comedian, you're comfortable splitting the attention of the audience with, with anything else. My, well, they're cartoons, whatever you want to call them. You know, they're, they're behind. I, what happened was I started doing lots of these to avoid writing. So then I thought, well, I better use them now I've done them. So I, I we projected them behind, yeah. But you've never thought, oh, well, I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll keep my stand-up, my stand-up, and I'll have my art in a gallery. You've never thought that. I'm going to call it art. You might not you be comfortable with it. You can call it that, yeah. But it, it definitely is art. Well, there, there, there are things on paper, but they, they, <laughs> I did them because I was making these little books. I wrote these little animal stories, which are sort of fables. They're about animals, but they're probably not animals. They're people having a midlife crisis or whatever, and, and, they, and, and they're illustrated. So, yeah. We, you know, I'm cheap. I just used what I had made, OK? If it, if I'd made sculpture out of spit and socks, I would have used that, you know, so... Uh, Dylan, it has been a pleasure. Dylan's Australian tour starts Friday. Would you please thank Dylan? Bye. <laughs>